Okay. Um, at the end of the session. All right. So um, let me screen share um, what I'm doing. Okay. So uh, you'll be able to see it right now as I go. And uh, thank you, Fasel. Is Fasel here uh, for trying to reach me through uh, Skype? Okay. I'll tell you what um, problems I've been having. I'm using a Mac, a PC, a huge Mac, really nice big screen and everything. But lately it's been going funny. The um, screen has been turning light blue. Okay, light blue is not so bad when you think about it because, you know, what's light blue? But the minute it turns from white to blue, <laughs> that means that you see all the lines. Okay, and uh, that could be really, really annoying. All right, so let me um, share with you what I'm doing. You can see the poll. It's pretty much uh, 26 people have voted. It's pretty much... Uh, let me share the results with you from the other end. Okay, this is what you see from my screen, so I'm going to share the results. All right, so it's pretty even uh, as far as the participants go. Out of 31% uh, would like to, 24% uh, have never used a live virtual class, and 31% have. Okay, that's a very unusual poll result, so uh, I'm glad. Okay, that's the end of the poll. But th that's one of the features that you can have in a live virtual class, specifically with IQ, and that's uh, the poll. Okay, I'm going to uh, share with you content. Okay, this is the top. I think you can see it. I'm going to go into content library where I have lots of, and you can see them, a lot of uh, content. Some of it is PowerPoint. Some of it 452. Some of it is uh, Word documents. There are also PDF files. Some of the um, content is in the form of audio as well as video. You need to upload the content before the class. Now this is really, really important. You don't do it during the class unless you want to demonstrate how it's done, the way I'm doing right now, or if you want your students to add their content. And the whole point of the class would then be for you to work on the students' documents. Okay, here you can see uh, a video. Here is a, I think it's just a audio format. Okay, so uh, that's something that you can also add to a library. And this is very valuable because not everybody can use, okay, here's a, this is a video. Okay, so that's also, here is an audio by Michael Wesh. I don't know if you know him, but he provided me with uh, voice. Okay, and I'm going to add this to our class. So that's how it's done. Let me also share with you. Okay, so I've added the video. Now I'm going to share with you how I get to look at the top screen. Okay, the polls where I was before. Breakout room is what I had yesterday and the day before. And here is the media player. Now the media player, as I was saying, could be problematic. Some students live in countries like China and other countries where YouTube may not be accepted because Google is not accepted or other American companies may not be accepted. So you cannot add YouTube videos. You'll have to try to get a media file. Okay, MP4 for the instead of a YouTube video. Okay, and I've got some here. In a class this week, I um, did both, just to make sure that everybody could uh, get it. Okay, here I'm going to add... Dubbed the explainer by Wired Magazine, 
Can you hear that? Michael Wesh is a cultural anthropologist uh, Sebastian, good exploring question. the effects of new media on society and culture. Dr. Wesh graduated summa cum laude from the Kansas State University. Can you hear that? Just let me know the um, chat box. And earned his doctorate in anthropology <laughs> okay. at the University of Virginia. All right. Some of you may not be able to find your chat box now, so and I'll cultural help you with change that. In Melanesia. Okay, I'm going to stop that, but it's a really interesting uh, lecture by Michael Wesh, who's also a friend. All right, so um, that's one thing you can add. You can also add music. Okay, here's an example. Can you hear that? I don't know if that's your taste, but the point is about YouTube. And uh, another country was mentioned here, Pakistan, okay? YouTube videos are not accepted in Pakistan, and this is uh, important uh, because you don't want your students not to be able to watch the YouTube video. I think that's very, very up to the point of being disrespectful. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, because you can't do that. You can't, you know, have a live online class and uh, exclude some students from viewing YouTube because their country does not uh, allow it, okay? They should not be penalized for anything. So one of the first points in an online class is respect, and uh, being on time is one of the... But since it's technology, and we don't always have control, okay, uh, and sometimes things can go wrong, so we can be accepting, and we should be accepting, when technology doesn't work, on the one hand, and we should also help our students. Oh, I'm glad you can see me. I had the uh, webcam off. So we should be respectful. Our students, you know, I, I don't like to relate it to anything religious, but our students are everything. You know, when we come into the classroom, it's the students who come in first, because as teachers, we're here to do everything for them, even in the online class, okay? So that's really, really important. Not everybody these days, oh, you can't see me, uh, Dev Raj. I'm not on YouTube, so there shouldn't be a problem, just kidding. Um, you can't see me? That's interesting. Um, you should be able to. I don't see myself. At oh, I know why. Okay, I know why you can't see me for the same reason I can't see myself. And um, let me see if this changes things. Okay, you may find with IQ virtual class, and I'll get back to our students because they are the most important thing in the classroom. More important than technology, more important than the whiteboard. Okay, so students come in first, participants in any case. All right, this is, I'm screen sharing why you cannot see my video, and neither can I, because it's down here. Now, I want you to take a look at the bottom left-hand corner of the WizIQ frame, and you'll see something, an icon, which is integrating technology, and then you'll see live video, you may see, you may, you don't have to. Uh, live video. Okay, so I'm going to pop it up. There it is. There there I am. Okay, there's the uh, the video. And notice if you hover your mouse over anything, it'll tell you exactly what it is. So that's minimize, that's maximize, and that's pop in. So you pop in. Now what happens when you pop in? I'm popped in. In other words, the uh, webcam is now popped in. Now what I want everybody to do is I want you to practice this, okay? You're going to do exactly this. Do you see minimize just above my uh, webcam? Go to the minimize and click on it. You can do this during the recordings, by the way, too. So make that, and then you're gonna see minimize for the attendee list, make that go away. Then you're gonna minimize the chat box, make that go away. And what are you left with? The white screen. Now, students may wish to only see this because they need to focus. It's not always easy to focus on so many different things, on the webcam, on the class attendees, on the chat box. So teachers as well as students 
might prefer this. Okay, and I'm going to pop them back up. Pop, click on it, pop it in. Click the bottom left, kick it up, and pop it in. And then the chat, which you can also disable, by the way. Okay, so you can also pop in. And that's how you can... Oh, it's a mess. Okay, let me stop screen sharing. All right, I just screen shared to show you. So um, tell me, did you come with a uh, headset? Very cheap one, a headset. And of course you need an audio. Okay, a little thing here. So the, a microphone, sorry. So you can speak. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready uh, to speak. All right, and you have a webcam. Okay, so give me thumbs up for I have a microphone that works. Give me two thumbs up, Diane, if I have a webcam. So one thumb, okay, Sebastian and Diane. That's what I thought. That's why I put my question there again. Megan says she's not sure. That's a good one. Okay, I can help you that. Oh, you have a built-in? That's fine. That works together probably with the uh, mic. Tumba up. Okay, now if you want to check what you have, all you need to do, and you're going to do it now, okay, so please uh, do the following. Go into your device settings, okay, so give me a number one if you know where your device settings are. Number one if you know. Zero if you don't. Number one, I know where my device settings are. Number zero, or zero is a number, right? Um, I don't know. Okay, so we've got uh, Di Diago Arango, who doesn't know, Susanna doesn't know. Oh, Fasel is well known. Okay, Fasel is going to lead us today. He's super plus. Okay, that's great, Fasel. <laughs> and Diane, are you a math teacher? All right. So I don't see the others. Maybe they can't hear me. Should I put up a poll? See, putting up a poll is one way of knowing whether the students are really hearing what you say. Because if you ask something and nobody responds, and then you put a poll and they respond, you know that they're able to read, but maybe not. So I could do a poll, and then um, I'm going to create one. And the question is, can you hear and see me? Okay, so that's the question, and the option is, uh, yes, I can. You can do this beforehand, by the way. You don't have to do it during class, so I can hear you. Uh, no, I cannot hear you. You don't want to do it during class, so um, uh, yes, I I don't know. Okay, that's enough, I think. Okay, so let me uh, publish that and see if we get um, the results. Okay, to the poll, and we'll see if everybody's here and there's no problems. Because not everybody responded. You see, if there are 31 people and only three or four respond, there's a problem somewhere. All right, so 21 can hear me, and 23. I want to see 31 responding, and I see that one cannot hear me. Now, that is trouble. In a live online class, that is trouble for everybody, actually. It's trouble for everybody because you want your students and yourself, of course, you want to be heard and you want your students to hear you. Now, notice five people, are, five people, four people are not responding. Okay. Uh, four people are not responding. Now, I wonder why they're not. Oh, Claudia says he cannot... Claudia, sorry, says she cannot see me. Okay, 29. All right. So the question is why you cannot see me. 
Okay, no, there isn't a problem. See, the teacher, as a teacher, I know there's no problem. I know because I can see my tools. So you should be confident as a teacher. Okay, you should be very confident if you see things working. All right, I'm going to be jumping over again to the screen share. You are going to be confident. If you, oh, if you have a low connection, you may get an X over the webcam saying that you have a low connection. That's true. But if you don't get that, then you should be able to see yourself on the webcam. And if you see yourself, everybody should be seeing themselves unless they're having uh, internet delays. Next, if they, everybody should hear you if you see the bar over my head going up to the red spot. Okay, we're going to go into the device settings. Are you ready? The device settings. Ah, uh, Faisal, I thought you heard me. All right, so please watch and, and go into your... I have to change my keyboard too. Sorry, it's not a Mac keyboard. Everything is falling apart on my end. You have no idea. Please watch and go into your device settings, okay, which is the wrench just above, just at the top there. Okay, all right, there we go. So I'm going to do that, okay, to show you how. You go into this thing, you click on it, or you click next to it, it's up to you. And then this is what you see, device settings. Okay, always check your device settings before the class and if somebody complains during the class is as a teacher. Okay, so you should be checking first of all to make sure that the right thing appears here. Okay, and I notice I have a few on my system. I have a built-in input. I have a Logitech camera, which I'm using, but I'm not using it for the audio. For the audio, I'm using my built-in Mac. Okay, these are other ones that I have hidden somewhere that I don't use these days. Now, if I want to make sure you can see the bar going up, so I'm going to test this. Hello, this is Nelly testing the system. Hi, good morning. This is an opportunity to listen to yourself, to watch yourself, and to... Hello, this is Nelly testing the system. Hi, good morning. This is an opportunity to listen to yourself, to watch yourself, and to... Okay, so that was the system playing back what I said. Next, you're going to test. Usually, this is fine, but check it anyways, okay? Okay, that's to make sure that your audio playback is working. Now, next is the camera. You've got a few opportunities, maybe. I'm using uh, a Mac, so it's built in EyeSight or the Logitech that I added to the system. Notice just for the camera, for the audio I'm using built in. And that's it. It should say save settings. If you need more help, there's read the guide or facts, frequently asked questions. And here they are. Okay, use that. Okay, it's important. Okay, there's information on the Mac too. And if you have any problems, I highly suggest either searching for it or going over it. Okay, lot these troubleshooting frequently asked questions are really important okay for the features okay they're all broken down for the media player okay uh, for the content upload for the screen sharing breakout rooms everything you want to know for audio and for video lots of questions I also want you to notice at the bottom notice here please write Give us a call. That's with IQ. Read resources. Join the form. Orientation course, which is not really working right now. And check with IQ support. Take advantage because with IQ really wants to help. And not that many companies do. Okay, there are many companies you can talk to in the face and they will not really support you. I want you to take a look just above my head. You'll also see different things. And then there's the X. Can everybody see the X? What does it say? Just, it, my mouse is hovering over it. What does it say? 
Can you put it in the chat box? You should be able to see it. I'm at the top right of my screen because I'm screen sharing. Hello, Ramesh. Good to see you. Thank you for helping out. Well, yes, I'm on a Mac. This is not on a Mac. In whatever system you are on, but I am on a Mac. Yes, that's right. So I don't see any response. Maybe you don't know what that is. Do you see what it says? Yes, thank you, Sebastian. Now, if one person answers, I know that it's going to appear in the recording. But what if everybody says, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see. Okay, then I will need to contact support as the teacher and find out what happened during my class. Okay, there's a delay. All right, that's okay. There is a delay. All right, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And before I go through the slides, which I've prepared, I'm going to uh, give the mic to some people. Uh, for example, Susanna. Okay, I'll give you the mic. And let's see. Uh, student is using tablet. Aha. See, I also get information here. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't because Students I'm not screen sharing. Tablet. But I think uh -huh. you see. I also get information here. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't because I'm not screen sharing. But I think. Hi, Susanna. Now, what's happening with Susanna? You talk. Oh, I like the music. Hmm. Okay, now, on a tablet, okay, that was um, Susanna, on a tablet, okay, so tablets are different. If you're, as a teacher, I suggest you go in, in a regular PC or a laptop, laptop is fine, but not on a tablet, only if you're a student, okay, as a teacher, you know, this. Technology is not that advanced, but I want to show you what information I have, okay? When I go hover my mouse over the participant, so I see Hussein. I see exactly where he is because I'm not, if, if he were in the breakout rooms, I would see a room. Here it's main room. I can see that he has no controls. I can see the latency, 412 milliseconds, okay? This is all the information I get. I can have more, I can also block him or her if uh, they are disturbing. So I can tell, tell when they came into class in their time zone or my time, their time zone, I presume. Okay, um, notice other information here. Okay, peer to peer, I can see everything about them. He's using Windows, Flash version everything, the screen resolution. So you see, not only the teacher, but WizIQ can get this information and they can help. They can contact, and the port, of course, they can contact the participant and help. Oh, don't feel bad. <laughs> we'll see. Don't feel bad. This is just, to, this is a class for teachers on teaching with WizIQ. So it's important that you know that as a teacher, you can help your students. Okay, I'm going to stop screen sharing. That's excellent, Jean de Luna. Luna. That's excellent. Oh, you're right. My was muted. Now, how could that possibly happen? Okay, how could that happen? Did you see the screen? Yes. So how could it possibly get muted? Okay, how can it get muted? Is it the system? Is it the teacher? You know, how did it happen? Of course it returned. It returned because, as Diana said, it was muted. Okay, so make sure that when you're showing things, you don't... Okay, mute your mic. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's not muted, so keep checking. So while you're speaking, you should also look at the camera and also look at the side of your eye to make sure that everything's working or you can simply put the camera 
uh, right there in front of you like I just did and then you have no problems looking at the camera and looking at the screen okay so that's uh, an idea I'm gonna move my chair too so I'm right so you can play around move yourself around and so on okay Wiz IQ is very reliable okay very reliable I've been using Wiz IQ since 2007 and I teach um, fully face-to-face -face. <laughs> and you could say fully online I teach both face-to-face -face, blended and fully online using WizIQ and I have had no problems even though today my computer is in a very bad way but as you can see um, with a strong internet connection there should not be any problems okay but you need do need an internet connection all right so I would give was IQ a 10 yes and uh, I have given demos to universities and they agree now the next important thing is support okay support is really important and you can get support 24 7 somehow uh, confusing why I think WizIQ is the most unconfusing class. And the reason it's unconfusing is that you have very simple layout. You have the left, you have the center, and you have the right. Okay, so today we're going to look at, and we've looked at, navigation. How do you navigate through a WizIQ class? The course okay courses that you can put out the differences between courses and the live class what is meant by courseware the course feed and social so if any of you have created a live with IQ class you will see this a uh, sorry course you will see this or if you have an account on with IQ you will see this so what is that would you say it's confusing? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's confusing. And a thumb down if you think, no, this is not confusing. Thumbs down, it's great. Okay, you see, for me, it's both. So thumbs down, notice it's good. Thumbs up, it's confusing. Thumbs up is confusing. Okay, so where is our friend who said it's confusing? All right, what makes it confusing? And what does confusing mean anyways? All right, so this word is very, very important. Confusing. I'm confused. All right, instead of saying I'm confused, people say confusing. What do you think would be better for a teacher to hear? I'm confused or this is confusing okay put the word that you prefer confusing or confused you prefer as a teacher you prefer to hear your students say confused I'm confused well when your students say this is confusing just switch off and think they just said I'm confused because it's you who are confused it doesn't mean that this is confusing for everybody it's just confusing for you and the question if it's confusing why is are you confused by this what is it it's just an image so why are you confused what is confusing about it that makes you confused what Okay, of course, you're looking at the whiteboard, okay, at all of this. It's not clear. What is not clear? The screen share? I'm not screen sharing. Not now? All right, so take a look at the whiteboard. Is the whiteboard confusing you? Are you confused because of the whiteboard? 
now. Are you confused by the whiteboard now? Everybody, are you confused? Yes or no? No. All right. Oh, Cheryl, you can't even see the whiteboard? So Cheryl cannot see the whiteboard. Cheryl, are you using a uh, Mac? You're still on the white, on the last screen? Which screen? Are you on screen number one? Is this the screen that you see? Oh, you're using a Mac. I'm wondering. Uh, you, you might need, okay, I'm going to put this word in the chat. Plugin, okay? Update your plugins. Very important. Now, after you update a plugin, update Flash. Uh, whatever you have on your computer, Flash, Shockwave, what else? Um, what else do we need to upgrade? Everything on our computer. Um, Apple, Java. Okay, update them and turn off your computer. Turn off your computer after you do that. So update and turn off your computer. Don't ask me why, but that's how they work. Okay, Dev. So Dev, not right now. Okay, but after this class, before you give a class on WizIQ, make sure, or any other system for that matter, make sure that your computer is updated. Okay, so what do you see right now? Okay. My screen often freezes. I couldn't even type before your face would be frozen also. Okay, let me take my face off. Okay, I'm going to take off my... Let me do that now. I'm going to take away my... I don't know if I can do that, actually. Um, I can do it right now. I can do it before the class. But you can actually... If you want, you can uh, take away my video, my webcam. Okay, I just did that, so um, that might make it easier. Teaching in a live class, Hussein. Okay, today's class is called Teaching in a Live Virtual Class. That's the name of the class. Teaching in a live virtual class. And that's exactly what we are talking about. We're talking about teaching in a live virtual class. Okay, there's the, um, okay, in a live virtual class. Okay, and this, what you're looking at is the whiteboard of a live virtual class. Any other questions about what we're doing? This is slide number two. This slide is what your account would look like if you have a lot of courses. Right now, I am in a course called Teaching and Learning Online. As you can see, there are learners about the course on the left and there is add a live class, add content, and add test. In the middle, if I'm on the course where I will see everything, all the content and all the live online classes that I have scheduled. That's what you need to do. Content, which is courseware, the tutorials like I showed you at the beginning, and your live classes. Any questions up to now about this slide, which is on the whiteboard? All right, so we'll do this slowly. On the right, I added a video to this course. You don't have to, but I thought it would be interesting, and that's what I did. Now, if you want to create a course on WizIQ, 
so you can create live classes. You cannot create or schedule a live class on WizIQ unless it belongs to a course. Okay, so how many of you, give me a thumbs up, if you have tried to create a course on WizIQ? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you have tried or if you have created a course on, okay, very, very good. All right, so Diago and others, please try to create a course. You will find this on the left side of your screen. It'll say create course. In order to create course, you have to have a teacher account, not a student account. You can change your account to a teacher account. Create a course. Okay, this will be your task for the week. If you already have a course, all you need to do is add a live class. Okay, I want everybody to create a live class this week. And this is what it looks like. This course is called Teaching and Learning Online. And this live class is called Teaching and Learning Online. Okay, this is the class. Notice the difference between a course and a class. A course consists of content and live classes. I don't think I'll be able to see that, Cheryl, because you've got C on it. If you have C on it, it means that the image is on your computer and we cannot see it. The only way to share it, Cheryl, would be for me to give you uh, a chance to upload it, which I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to give Cheryl um, tools and Cheryl will be able to upload from her desktop. Okay, Cheryl. So Cheryl, um, I'll let you do that. Okay, so just go into the upload from desktop and upload your image. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, I'm going to continue. So take a look at the left here. This is how you create content. You add content, which is a PowerPoint, as I said, an audio video file. But it's not an image. Okay, it's everything but an image. PDF. Word document. So class term is no, 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 Rezier. Class is what happens in real time. Class is considered real time. Think of a class at a university or school. You go to class, you go into a room, a physical room. Same thing here. The upload, Cheryl, is at the top left. Top. Uh, of my screen. You'll see things on the left, and then you'll see navigation on the top. You should be able to get the, uh, the content box there. You'll find it. It's exactly where it is. Okay, so I, I guess, Cheryl, you've never created a live online class either. Okay, so this, everybody's going to do it this week. Okay, so Razier, again, a class it's like this is a virtual class because it's not really in a building where we gather together in a room, but it is where you are in your house and it's like a room, okay? It has everything that a room has. It has a whiteboard, it has a list of students' names, it has a chat which, you know, you have to raise your hand to chat and so on. Okay, so let's continue. All right, Priscilla, you'll be able to uh, watch the recording. All right, so let me continue. If you have any questions, feel free to... Links are dead. What do you mean, Cheryl? I see the green page icon. Yes, it's green. That's right. Click on that and you'll be able to upload. It's not a link. You have to upload from your computer, Cheryl. All right, so first of all, you need to create a course. A course is a learning environment, just like a class is a learning environment. There is synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous means you sync the time. 
So how do we sync time together? At the same time. So look at your watches and let's synchronize. Exact same time. The course, the title of this course is Learning Online. I think I mentioned this before, but I can say it again. And the name of the class is, is Teaching in a Live Virtual Class. So the name of the course is, uh, let me go back to WizIQ. So I can show you this. I would have to go under my courses. And uh, I guess I'm blessed because I have a lot of courses. Oops, I see our time is going. I'm going to give you back the time that I uh, had taken from you. Yes, Diana, you create a course. And then you add a live class and content to your library. You upload it to the class and voila. Okay? Asynchronous means that it's not time dependent. So a course is asynchronous. It doesn't depend on time. You can go there whenever you want to. But synchronous means you can only be here right now. Because right now will not last. Okay, this is now. As the song goes, now or ever. Okay, learning experiences. In a live online class, or in a course. The experiences should be meaningful. They should have meaning for the person who's learning. So if you don't know why you're here or what this class is about before you come to class, it's going to be very hard to pick up. So you should know what you're taking. What course am I taking? It should be socially engaging and fun. It should all be fun. So relax. All right, these are some of the tools you can use if you're in trouble. You can screen share the way uh, right now Cheryl could be screen sharing her problem through, for example, Screencast-O-Matic and sharing the link, not from her computer, from the cloud. Same thing with Screener or Jing. Okay, so you don't need to save things on your computer. You can share them simply online. All right, so what you're going to do uh, before we get timed out, you'll have lots of questions. And um, let me just take you to the course so that you know where you add the questions. Okay, so um, let me take you to the course. Unless somebody can beat me to it. What is this course? Maybe some of you are taking a lot of courses with me. So uh, you're kind of lost because you don't know what... Oh, this is Nellie again. But which course am I taking with her? Okay, that could very well be. And I apologize <laughs> for that. Okay, because I do give a lot of courses. But this particular course is called Teaching... Let me find it for you. So that you know where to add the information. Okay, teaching online. Here we are. I think it's this one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it should be this one. I'm checking by dates, by the way. Okay, today is uh, August. I think it's this one. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so this is the course, Blending and Flipping. All right, so Blending and Flipping. So how do you find the course? You go into your uh, courses, okay, and then you should be uh, getting it. Okay, there it is. All right, so here's the link to the course for anyone who doesn't know. There, Sebastian beat me to it. Okay, thank you, Sebastian. All right, that's the course. Lee J. Favors. That's the link of the course, okay? So what you do is you create a course. You have to have a teacher's account. You create a course. You schedule a class by going into where? Where are you going to go to schedule the class? Okay, let's see if you can find the answer somewhere. 
where do you go to schedule a class? You create a course, number one, create a course. Number two, schedule a class where? Well, in the course where. You have to go to the course where and create a class. That's right. Next, <clears throat> you add it to a calendar so you don't forget. You invite participants, you develop content, you share the content in the course. Where do you share content? In the course where? Uh, you can do a Google Calendar or any other calendar. I prefer Google Calendar. They're very good. Everything Google is excellent as far as I'm concerned. And then you share content in the course. All right. And then you share the session. You take the link and you share the live class. Session is a live class in your social networks. What social networks do you belong to? If you can add that in the chat. Okay, what social, where can you share the class, the link of the class? Well, you've got Facebook, Google Plus, that's right, LinkedIn, Twitter, Scoop It. I don't know if you're familiar with Scoop It. Scoop It is great. You're going to love it. Okay, Scoop It, Pinterest. Okay, those are uh, really popular. And in your blog, that's right, Susanna. Excellent. In your class blog, very good. Okay, and uh, Thomas is suggesting the Hangout, if you've got enough energy. Yes. Yes, very good, Professor Oliver. Thank you for reminding us. You can also invite participants through your email. That's right, you can email them. Excellent, thank you for the reminder. Now, how do you develop content? What are you going to do with your presentation on? You're going to have a class. And on what? What are you going to do it on? This class is on the live online class, okay? But... What are you going to do it on? If you've got a class that's going, or a course that's going, then you have no problem. You know what you're going to do next. But if not, think of a topic and decide what you know about the topic, what you want to know, how are you going to get the information, and then what you learned. And what you learned is what you add to your PowerPoint presentation. And that's how you're going to name your class. Okay, so you got to choose a topic, search for information, create a PowerPoint, add the PowerPoint to your courseware, to your content. Okay, and the same thing. You can add images to your PowerPoints. You can use Google Drive, schedule a live class, add the PowerPoint on WizIQ to your courseware, and then add it like it is here to your whiteboard all right and then you're going to record what you do like I am doing right now you're going to record the process how you schedule a class how you create a course how you create the PowerPoint presentation how you give the class you're going to document everything you do Document your steps. Is that clear? Do you know what it means to document everything you do step by step? <laughs> okay, all right. Sebastian knows. So if you have any questions, where are you going to ask them? Where are you going to ask your questions? Where? Yes, it does, Thomas. But I want to know the process, how you did the whole thing and you want to remember them. Okay, so the idea is to have it documented because you want to reflect and you want to improve the process. That's why I do it, by the way. I record all these classes I've been recording for years so that I can see how things went from my end because, and not just that, WizIQ is sometimes slow, but when I add this to YouTube, it goes very fast. All right. Ah, good question, Diane. 
we improve. If you do something 10 minutes a day for a year, you're going to be an expert. And I've been doing this for seven. You do get better. Of course, everything gets better. You get more confident. Things work. You know, it's strange, but when we're confident, things never go wrong. And if they go wrong, it's not a big deal. Okay, so the experience, you know, it's like asking, is experience worth anything? Well, you decide. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, I do have uh, lots of videos, if you ever have time, uh, to go through some of them. They're by topics. All right, so you're going to document everything, as I said. And here are the instructions again on this slide. Now, where are you going to find this slide? Okay, where are you going to find it? Well, you're going to find it in the courseware for this course, in the courseware. And where are we going to ask questions? Because you're going to have lots of questions. And you should. The more questions, the better. That's right, Diane, in the course feed. And how come you know you've been exposed to it? Okay, if you use it, you don't lose it. So do it now. Don't be afraid. So what's the first step? Let's uh, see if you remember the steps. Number one, you complete the sentence. You must have what kind of account? You must have a teacher account. Perfect. Number two, you need to create a, create what? That's right, you need to create a course. And where are you gonna get the information? On the right or on the left? Left or right? Where are you gonna get, where are you gonna create the course? Where is it gonna say, it's going to say create course. Where will that appear? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Some say left, some say right, some say, is it in the middle? No. It's not. <laughs> It's on the left, everybody. Create a course. It says create a course on the left. Okay, you'll see it. And if it's confusing at first, you'll see that eventually it'll all clear up and you'll think, oh my gosh, was that confusing? No. All right, so things will clear up. Trust me, they always do. So number next Okay, number three, after you create a course and so on, you're going to create con, what's the word, con, tent, that's right. You're going to create it before you add it because, and are you downloading the content or uploading it? You're going to upload it to your library, to the courseware, okay, so you're going to upload in the courseware, upload content. All right, and after you upload content, at least you know what you're doing, right? If you don't know what you're doing, you may want to create a KWHL to help you. Okay, so you're going to upload the content, and then what are you going to do? You're going to sked. You're going to what? Sked, sked, schedule. That's right. You're going to schedule a what? Class. That's right. You're going to schedule a class. And while you're doing all this, you're going to document it. Yes, you're going to go step by step, either through screen sharing or you got to write down, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Okay? Or you're going to have a map of what you did. First, I did this. Okay? I want to see the process. You want to know the process. Okay? You can use screencasts. You can write it down, whatever means you want. I think Screencast-O-Matic is great for this. It's free. And then you can speak. But if you don't want to speak, you can have a robot speak, okay? Yes, it seems easy, Diana, because you, you're working. You know, people who work uh, will find this quite easy. Okay, so keep at it. Don't start. Okay, the hardest thing is to start. Once you schedule a class, you're going to give the class. Okay, what does it mean to give a class? Okay, you're going to give the class the way I am now. You're going to invite people. All right, so are you ready? <laughs> Become Nelly. <laughs> are you ready, everybody? All right, if you want to see my face.
Are you ready? Everybody ready? Well, I don't see myself because my... Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up. Yay, Harriet's here. Harriet, there are so many people who are so enthusiastic. And that's all you need. You just need to want to, okay? Nothing great was ever achieved with that enthusiasm. And you've got it, okay? You've got it. So yes, Nadim, everybody's going to do it. You're going to create a course. And you're going to schedule a class, add content. And you're going to do what I do. And then you're going to make money. Yes, you can make money teaching online. Did you hear about the Chinese, the man from Hong Kong? Hong Kong is it or Korea? Korea. There's a man in Korea who's making four million. He works 60 hours because he has to respond to the students, but he gives four, I think four live sessions a week, four billion dollars a year. All right, so uh, have your faith. You can do it. If he can do it in Korea, he takes four dollars for a class. What's four dollars? Or for a course. I think it's a course. Four dollars for a course. So there are a lot of people out there and you're going to be great teachers. All right, so uh, let's get started. Bye for now. And again, I apologize for technology because I know I'm perfect, but technology is not. All right, so thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and the rest of the weekend. Bye for now. Ask questions in the course feed. Don't forget, ask questions, ask questions. That's how we learn, by asking. So don't, every question is smart, okay? And I love people who ask questions. I'll give you good grades. And of course you do, you will get a certificate uh, when I think you're ready to teach online as an online teacher. Okay, so uh, you got to do everything before that. And this course is a year round. It doesn't stop. Okay, so you'll keep learning and learning. Bye for now.